Excuse me, good people. <laughs> and bad. Look, I got Angela Robinson with us today. As y'all know, I'm Rob Sergio Mack. This is the Three Keys Podcast, where we focus on knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So today we're going to hit you with a little knowledge, a little wisdom, and a little understanding when it comes to life insurance. How you doing, Angela? Welcome to the show. I am doing exceptionally well today, and I'd just like to thank you for this opportunity. Every chance I get to talk about life insurance... I, I jump on the chance. It's, it's a wonderful topic, and I certainly have a lot to say. All right, then. Let's say it. Good people, I'm going to hit y'all with some facts real quick. So the average cost of a funeral is $8,000. That's with none of the real bells and whistles. So I know it's a lot of people out there that say, hey, I just get cremated. That's $2,000. That's with no service. That's just you show up at the funeral home, and they hand you to your people, and... um in a container and we're not talking about a top of the line container no bells and whistles on that container there will be no alarm clock on that container the average cost of the cremation with the service is six thousand dollars so we're talking about big money here i've experienced the burden of burying uh uninsured people i feel like a lot of people in our community uh, are tasked with burying uninsured people and to prevent that from happening there's a very feasible plan it doesn't cost a great deal of money. So there is term and then there is whole policy, right? That's correct. All right. What's the difference? So term is just that. It's for a specific amount of time. It's it's term. It's going to go away at some point. The mm. policy will, will terminate. And it's usually 10, 15, 20-year or 30-year term policy. So at the end of that term, you are no longer insured. Mm, okay. So the benefit to a term mm -hmm. is that you'll expire, uh -huh. you know, you'll you'll decease, and then your family can receive the death benefit. As long as it's within that. As long as it's within that term period. All right. So if it's a if I have a twenty year term and I pass year nineteen, I'm good. Your family will get the death benefit. Family. That is correct. But if I pass year twenty one and I don't renew the policy, there is no benefit now. Okay. Term policies are renewable, but they are renewable at a much higher rate. Because you're further down the road. Correct. Makes sense. That okay. That's correct. So whole policy, how does how does that? Is whole it? policies. Now, I love a whole policy. I know. You just lit up. I know. I, I lit up like a Christmas tree. So you have a lot of whole policies. So you have a paid up at 65. Say if I'm 30 years old and I don't want to pay for my policy beyond 65, mm -hmm. then I want to purchase a whole life policy that says paid up at 65. Mm. You can purchase that paid up in 20 years. That's mm -hmm. the, the pay at 20 year. Mm -hmm. uh, then you also have the executive whole life policy, but you pay into that until age 95. So mm. when you talk about whole life insurance, there's a whole menu uh, of what you can select from. Mm -hmm. And usually if a person comes to me and they say, I want to buy a whole life policy, then I give them what we call a needs identifier because we want to identify the needs. Are nice. you wanting to leave a legacy? Do you want to have money? Maybe you started later on in life having children. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 40 years old and I got to get these kids through school. Well, if I die at 70, how, what's my plan to do that? Hmm. So, you know, if you want to leave the church some money, you know, mm -hmm. what does that look like? So there's a whole identifying uh, protocol that we'll go through to determine your life number. So I take it with that call, you would let a person know how much insurance they need as well. Correct. Based right. on the mm -hmm. legacy they'd like to leave. When it comes to legacy, there are a few tools that can uh, create and maintain a legacy, like life insurance let's say i'm a new new first time parent got a got a kid here mm -hmm. should i do a 40-year term or a 20-year term or should i do a hold for this child for a child yeah. you can do a term policy mm -hmm. to age 17 mm -hmm. but the preference for me and i don't want to steer anyone in one direction or or not and i can give you the benefits of both but mm -hmm. again that term policy is going to go away mm -hmm. once that child hits that 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 termed That's age, right. uh, I would probably do a 20-year paid life policy. Oh, okay. What's That's that? That's a policy you're going to pay into for 20 years. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very small amount of money, small premium per month. You can pay it annually if you'd like to. Uh, Ron and I have them on our two-year-old and our five-month-old. But what that does is, and I did add the guaranteed insurability option on their policy. 
So that means that, say they go beyond the age of 22, mm -hmm. their policy is still intact. It's still growing in cash value, death benefit. I'm just no longer paying a premium on it because it's a 20 paid life policy. Mm. I'm only gonna pay into it for 20 years. What the guaranteed insurability option does, it, it makes them insurable up to age 43. Mm. They can go and buy more insurance up to age 43 without having to go through a medical exam. So mm. if my grandkids develop asthma, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, diabetes, something before age 43, guess what? They don't have to go through a medical exam. Mm. They're insurable. Right. And that costs anywhere from one to six dollars. That's amazing. So so really that's kind of how you win. Uh, typically kids are as healthy as all outdoors at that age. Once you get 23 though, 22. That's when you start to develop those. Uh, those things, uh, you know, along the ride, you know, and. Um, Some of those hereditary things like that. A lot of them, right, right. So right. one thing I will say about the, the 20 uh, paid life policy, mm -hmm. it does a lot, it really does. So let's, let's delve into that just a little bit. It comes with four different components. Mm -hmm. So of course you have the death benefit, right? Yes. Then you have the cash accumulation, mm -hmm. but you also have a critical illness rider, mm -hmm. free of charge with this policy. You also get a terminally illness rider. So that means if that child becomes critically ill mm -hmm. and you need to care for that child at home or medical expenses are just such that you and your husband or wife can no longer afford it. Mm -hmm. So guess what? You can take out the cash in that policy up to a certain amount. So is, this is the money that you've put in you can pull out of, or can you pull As out of As it accumulates the... cash, oh, okay. whatever that cash amount is, mm -hmm. you can borrow up to a certain amount, or you can just take it out altogether. If you take it out altogether, then it decreases the cash amount that's available, and it decreases the death benefit. But guess what? You were able to care for baby Susie or baby Johnny mm -hmm. at home without any interruption in cash mm -hmm. on the household front. Does that make sense? Yeah, almost like you're refinancing, kind of. Kind of, sort of. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Before I get you out of here, first off, I'd like to thank you again for coming by, okay? Now, good people, listen, in all seriousness, um, I'm not gonna pass judgment on anyone that chooses not to get life insurance, but not having life insurance is possibly one of the most selfish things that you could do Message. Uh, if you have a family. Do not leave the burden of burying you on your family. Even if you just get a, a burial plan. Um, of course, there's more to life after you than just putting you in the ground. Um, just please consider uh, being proactive. There are a lot of facts and then there's a lot of fiction out there. There are a lot of myths out there. And the best way to separate it all is to call a professional. I suggest Mrs. Angela Robinson or her husband, Mr. Ron Robinson. They're good people and they are friends of Three Keys Podcast.